The Story of My Life, Chapter 18 Chewing the gum in her mouth rolly, Bisola glanced at me again be before asking, Are you sure about this? Do you want to change your mind? I glanced angrily at her and snapped. Yes, I am, and I'm not changing my mind. Just stop it already. I let out a snort and looked away. It was like the twentieth time she was asking if I want to change my decision. Was something wrong with her or what? Turned breathed out heavily and looked back at Busala, saying, Leave her alone. She asked for this. Then she looked back at me. I'll help you. Whatever. She shook her head and looked through the car window. That was what she had been doing. Looking through the window in her own world. Thinking whatsoever she was thinking. I wet my lips with my tongue and had eye contact with the driver in a rare mirror. Turn had been the one to order for an Uber driver who was driving us to the Scarborough group, the gangster's place. Even though it uh, basically belonged to their boss, the boss had mentioned it belonged to all the members. Turn had been the one to brief me on that this morning as we were brushing our teeth. I was looking my best this morning because my friends had dressed me up. I was wearing Bissola's outfit, a green velvet gown and black high heels. In turn, did some makeup on my face to hide the bruises. My swelling eyes had reduced due to the fact that I placed a nice bag on it, thanks to Bissola. But it was still obvious. I gently touched my swelling eyes and remembered the lie Bissola had made up for me. It was that I missed my steps and hit my eyes on the staircase. And I only hope they are both believed it was necessary. Soyeon had told me their boss was the curious type, the one that asked questions upon questions, whether it was something relating to work or not. She had also said it was either because he was caring enough to know or that it was his way of analyzing something about his members. I closed my eyes, reopened them, and connect my eyes with the driver's eyes again. This time, I didn't take my eyes away from her. I stared at him and took a look away. If he was going to try to stay in trance with me, then I had better say my last prayer before we die. He was weird. He looked like a man in his thirties. His black hair wasn't thoroughly combed, and his beard wasn't shaved. His shirt and black jeans looked faded, and his wristwatch on his right hand was broken. Blood. I barely wanted to leave this car. Are you okay? Bissola asked me. Yeah, I'm fine. I lied, smiling at her. Well, get there soon, Bissola said, not believing my lie. I wasn't surprised. She knew me. She and Toyin knew me too well. True to Bissola's words, we alight and Toyin paid the driver. His word, I said. I don't think so, Toyin said, shaking her head. You wouldn't know because you were just looking through the window. Whatever, let's proceed. We walked down the street for a while and turned a corner only for me to see a wondrous beautiful mansion. Wow, this is beautiful, I exclaimed. Yeah, I know. Now, when we get there, behave yourself. I bathed my eyes as I was taken aback by what Tyne said. What? Here? You mean this is where your boss is expecting me? I asked, not believing Tyne even though she was looking serious. She has been moody since this morning. I didn't even see her smile this morning. This is where we are going and yeah, it's a mansion. So tell me, who have your final decision? Make it now. To proceed or go back, the solo question and my face fell. Those two were completely not happy with me. They should even give me the benefit that today was my birthday, but instead they were acting up. The mansion was so big and large, I imagined being lost in it. Was I really going into the mansion? So this place was where my friends had been coming to? This mansion was where they held their Wednesday meeting and Saturday night party. Speak up, I'm waiting, Isola said. I nodded my head and stared away from her and stared into the mansion. There were cars of different colors, rangers, brandeds. The garden flowers complemented in a way that was beautifying which I knew was going to attract passers-by. I saw my friends looking at me with the corner of my eyes as I stood in between them.
They were waiting for my reply as I stared at the old white painted building with a black gate. Okay, there was the time to proceed or back off. If I entered, I would pardon them. If I back down, I would just be me. They wanted changes in my life. To be a grown up and be able to face my bullies. Those bullies that made me suffer, made my life a living hell, and a laughing stock to the whole school. Their actions to me had always made me imagine the floor to grow a mouth and swallow me in, or the wall open and hide me there. But it was only a thought that didn't come true and uh, was never going to come true. I breathed out. No decision making was weighing me down. If I wasn't going to fight for myself now, I was never going to. If I back down now, I was going to continue to be prey. For some heartless human beings. The whole thing was confusing me and scared me as much as I wanted to go in and be happy. But the new journey scrapping group was more than that. It was now or never. I cleared my throat and replied, not taking any glance at my friends. I went in. My heartbeat pounded faster than usual after I heard myself. One part of me was scared of the unknown. Okay, you sure? Jane asked with a cold voice. I bumped my head, still glancing at them. All right, guys, open up. Isola said as I saw her looking up at the close circuit television camera that I was didn't know was there all along because I was so scared away with my thoughts. Plus, it wasn't obvious that it was there. You spoke to the CCTV, right? I asked, staring at the wireless CCTV. Yeah, I did, because I know someone's watching, Isola said, smiling briefly at the camera before she directed her eyes to the gate that was opening my, by itself. Come on, let's go. We stepped into the mansion and when I glanced back, the gate was slowly closing. We walked silently to the front door as we passed by a pool. In pool, I saw a few pirates chirping as they moved around the well-trimmed green garden. It was beautiful. There was an outdoor umbrella under it. There was a large table and three chairs on the left-hand side of the mansion where one should chill and enjoy the cool breeze of nature. On my right-hand side were dozens of cars packed side by side. When we get to the front door, we saw push the door open, revealing the big, all-white, empty sitting room. But before that, I caught a glimpse of small wireless CCTV on the ceiling where I was looking around. There's another CCTV at the floor step. I said to Tain, who went straight to where the big television was switched it off. Yeah, there is. No need to worry yourself too much over it. It's day and night CCTV. You understand what I mean? Isola asked without waiting for my response be before she continued. It records everything that happens in the day and night. Be careful. She looked into my eyes and I knew what that meant. A thousand things. Those rats need to turn off the TV whenever they aren't watching it. Toyin complained, shaking her head. Let's go. Isola pulled me. To her side, directing me to wherever we were going as if I was blind. Where are we going? I asked, carefully not to stumble because the way she was pulling me was as if we were going to catch a plane that was due to depart in a few seconds. To the dining room. They are waiting for us there. They glimpsed behind her and pulled me closer. Waiting for us? Who are they? I I just thought we were going to see your your boss alone. I voiced out my fear of seeing other gangsters. Don't worry, they don't bite, Isola said as she stopped suddenly and had me collide with her body frame. We were in front of the closed door that I guess was the dining room. There were many rooms in this building and everything I had been seeing in this mansion so far was telling me a five letter word. Money, that was it and eagerly began to wonder who their boss was. I nodded my head like a lizard, looked over to try to push the door open, but instead she pulled it. I scanned my eyes around the dining room and froze on the spot. That was before Basola pulled me in. Everyone stopped talking instantly and I swallowed, walking towards them. They were all masked and because of that, my fear was abounding. Was if 
what if I was tricked here to be kidnapped? What if my besties had sh- sacrificed me for ritual? If the truth got out to the press, everyone would say she walked into the lion's den by herself, but unholy to have God save her like Daniel in the Bible or before stepping in. Well, 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 look who we have here. People, a newbie, a man who is presumed to be their boss said, clapping his hands as he sat at the width of the dining table. His sitting pose at the window of the table made me guess he was the boss. He was sitting with his legs crossed while others were standing. I walked closer to the table and stood by beside Bisola, fumbling with my fingertips as I avoided their gazes. All eyes were on me and I felt hot. I was beginning to secret sweat in this air conditioning room. So, your friends here have told us about you. Actually told me, the boss said. His black eyes boring holes in in my body as I desperately wanted to know what he looked like. What every one of them looked like. Tell us about you. Right to business. No time to waste. About me? I bloated and surprisingly watched Toyin and Bisolo leave my side to the other members. What did they have to leave me to say hello to their friends? I thought disappointedly. How's I'm going to deal with this now? Hmm. I think we should have this discussion while having breakfast, a guy said. He was sitting in the first chair on the right hand side of the boss. The boss glanced at the guy and nodded. All right, one of you should tell Lizzie to come to serve us. I don't know what's keeping them so long. He ordered and began to press his phone. It was then I noticed the back of his hand was tied with Henry, and I wonder if every one of the members had one or so aside from Bisala. The dining room went silent as no one cared out their boss order. It was also now my boss. The guy on the right hand side sighed and looked over his shoulder to a standing member. Abigail, do you mind? Oh, come on. Why does it have to be me? Abigail complained and complied. Why does she have to be so grumpy? The boss says. She's the small one here. Wait, what? Small one? How old is she? I asked myself and started feeling my heels hurt me. Couldn't this boss allow us to sit? Henry, Abigail isn't small mentally, just physically, and you know she's smart. Henry, yeah, I forgot. I hope she isn't mad at me. Henry said, going through his phone. She is always mad at you because you always think she's small. She looks like a baby also. That's a baby face. I rolled my eyes and thought Henry was gullible. Could someone tell him I'm new here and I'm supposed to be offered a seat? Where's his mother? He was treating me like the other members who his person were used to standing until to told to sit. I pursed my lips and glared at my friends who had left me for for their friends. Well then, I guess this is my cross to carry and alone. A few minutes later, Abigail Small statured emerged, walking angrily to where the other members were, as three maids followed with trays of food. They served the meal as another three three maids came into with another set of food. They went to and fro, setting it up till the food was all fully served, but as that was going on, we watched as we stood on our feet. Was this a punishment? It felt odd. I looked at Bisola, who smiled at me, wriggled his her fingers as a way of saying hello. I eyed her and instantly understood why she is turn had decided to wear black today as that was the other members were all wearing. Black outfits all through. It was a black turtle long sleeve shirt, black pants and black boots. A frown made its way on my head as I recall the uh, Uber driver was I thought was weird. Twin and Bisola must have scared him with how kid up they were and with me. At the back with a swollen eye. He must have noticed something was going on. I wonder why I didn't think of that before now, but then it was away in my head, having my thoughts. When the maids were finally done setting the dining table up with different varieties of food, Henry cleared his throat and put down his phone. You can all be seated now.
he uncovered his food and one single glimpse 